Before we examine the building blocks, it's important to stress that model building is not an iterative process. Models built on the fly typically contain errors. In order to minimize errors when building your financial models, consider the following five steps. First, clarify the business problem. What problem is the financial model meant to solve? Who are the end users? What do users need to be able to do with this model? Secondly, think about all inputs and outputs needed. Try and keep the model as simple as possible. Ask yourself, what are the minimum number of inputs and outputs that we can get away with and still have a useful model? Thirdly, plan your model structure, including how the inputs, processing, and outputs will be laid out in your model. Try and keep your inputs all in one place if possible. Fourthly, once you've created your model, consider Excel tools that will help protect the integrity of your model data, such as data validation and conditional formatting. Finally, consider using test data to check that your model works as expected. The second point we referred to on the previous screen related to simplicity. Think about a financial model that you have recently built or used. How large is the model? Is it less than 1 megabyte or more than 10 megabytes? There is an inherent tension in model building between making your model realistic and keeping it simple and robust. Large models may appear to offer users a high degree of detail and precision, but by their very nature, large models are harder to follow and audit. Small models are generally easier to follow and audit, yet lack the degree of precision necessary for decision making. The best financial models work to reconcile these opposing forces, keeping things as simple as possible while still providing sufficient detail for decision making. Now, let's look at those financial modeling building blocks, the inputs, processing, and outputs in more detail. When building the input section of your financial model, you'll need to consider how your model ensures that inputs are accurate, inputs remain within reasonable data ranges, and that inputs are easy to use, understand, and update. Your model should be structured so that data is only ever entered once. Your inputs also should be clearly highlighted with color so that they are easily identified. Yellow shading or blue font color are often used for model inputs. The models you will see in this course always have inputs identified with blue font color. Finally, consider using Excel tools such as data validation, conditional formatting, and comments to help you maintain the integrity of your model inputs. Now that we've covered inputs, let's consider how to translate inputs into outputs. Do you try to put all your processing calculations into as few cells as possible? Do you hide your processing cells or worksheets? Hiding calculation cells or putting too many calculations into a cell makes your financial model harder to maintain and audit. Ideally, you want your processing calculations to be easy to maintain, structured to ensure accurate processing, and above all else, transparent so that users understand how the model works. Where possible, Break down complex calculations into several steps. Use comments to explain how your model works. Use formatting to ensure that formulas are not accidentally overtyped. And finally, calculate final figures on your processing worksheets and then link these figures to your final output sheets. This will make your model easier to follow and audit. We've covered inputs and processing. Now, let's spend some time on outputs. 
Financial model outputs include things like balance sheet forecasts, cash flow forecasts, DCF valuations, and so on. Ideally, you want to make sure your output cells or worksheets are easy to understand and unambiguous. Consider making your outputs modular so that the end user can choose which outputs he or she wants to review. For example, put your income statement forecast, balance sheet forecast, and cash flow forecast in separate groups or on separate worksheets. Consider creating a summary output sheet that allows users to review the key model outputs without having to go through the entire model. Use color to inform the user that your output cells are formulas and should not be touched. And finally, consider protecting your output cells and worksheets in order to maintain model integrity.